Hey there, this is Max from the future. I just have a couple of comments before you actually watch this video. I do not have any insights in the intricacies of this admission procedure. These are just my tips and my experiences. So please keep that in mind and enjoy watching. Hey there, my name is Max. I'm an aerospace engineering student at TU Delft. And today I'm gonna to give you some tips for the aerospace engineering selection procedure at TU Delft. First, I'm gonna talk about exactly what you have to do in that selection procedure and then give you tips along the way. All right, so at first you'll have to sign up through StudiLink, which is like the general application website for the Netherlands. You can easily compare to UCAS, whereas UCAS is for the UK and StudiLink is for the Netherlands. And you have to apply to TU Delft through StudiLink by a certain date. Then you also have to come complete a mini MOOC, a MOOC being a massive online open course. And all you have to do is watch the lectures and then do like a little quiz at the end. And then you're finished and no one looks at the grades or how you did on that quiz. All you have to do is complete it. And throughout that process, Delft is also going to ask you to send in some grades and then certification that you take certain subjects. For example, if you do the IB, they require math HL and physics HL. You can look up all that on the Delft website, which I will put in the description below. Now comes what's really important so this is going to be what they look into when you apply there are basically two parts to it one is a questionnaire like a motivation questionnaire or i think it's called an academic attitude questionnaire which you basically just have to complete truthfully answer the questions for that one i really have zero tips because i myself scored like two or three out of ten in that particular category so i don't know maybe they thought i just wasn't motivated enough or something and then the second most important parts which also weighs more in terms of the rankings at the end are the academic tests you have three academic tests one being mathematics second one being physics and the third being first year material first year material is stuff that you're going to learn in your first year and they are going to give you the content you basically have to learn it and then you're going to be tested on it the academic questionnaire counts towards 25 percent of your total ranking in the end and then the other three tests also 25% each. So the tests are 75% in total and the questionnaire 25%. And then at the end, you also have to fill in like a self-reflection. And then at some point you get your ranking and your ranking will determine if you made it into Tier Delft or not. So depending on your academic test scores and your questionnaire, you will be compared to all the other students that participated in the selection procedure in that year. And then if you got a higher average score, then your ranking is going to be lower. So the lower your ranking, the better. And if you are between rank one and 440, then you've made it. You're instantly into Tio Delft, like four, 440 is like more or less the cutoff. You get offered a spot and you can accept it on Link or decline it. If someone between rank one and 440 declines their spot, then rank 441 gets offered a spot. And all of that continues up until I think probably university starts. If you rank 450, for example, then you're most likely also going to get in. I think last year, lower 500, so 510, 520 also got a spot at the very end so don't be devastated i think if you're between uh, 1 and 500 you've basically made it but yeah between 1 and 440 you definitely made it and then up until 500 you've probably made it and from then onwards it doesn't look as good anymore for the academic tests for me they're online i think back in the day they might have been on campus as well but if they're online again they are going to be proctored meaning your camera is going to be on and so it's going to be your mic so they make sure that you don't cheat but you do get formula sheets and to get access to these formula sheets again go to the two Delft website that will be linked down below okay now for some general tips throughout the whole selection procedure or basically just for the tests the most important thing is that confidence is key you don't get far without being confident when you're writing the exam and in order to be confident you have to have made sure that you studied enough and that you know the material. A syllabus is provided per exam, so you know what you have to know. So go through every bullet point and make sure that you know everything about that bullet point. And also look at the formula sheets and make sure you know what every symbol on there stands for and where and how these formulas are applied. Then also there's a rumor going around and I'm pretty sure it's true that the tests are designed so that actually you can finish them in the time that is given to you so if you don't finish a test that's 
normal. I don't know a lot of people, or actually I only know two people which managed to finish one test. So if you don't get to the end, then don't worry about it. I mean, that's totally normal. Now also, one bad test doesn't mean it's the end. You'll have two more to recover and you probably did better than you think. Even though you think you only got a couple questions right, sometimes that might just be enough because these tests are really, really hard. The average on these tests is about like a three or four out of 10. At least that was in my year. Another tip is to keep in mind that you're not trying to get 100%, you're trying to be in the top 500. What might help with flipping that switch, you don't have to answer every single question correctly on the test, because first it's impossible, and second you don't have to do it in. Then also try to keep calm. Everything, at least in my year, and then last year, was online. There were some technical difficulties. In my year, the math test at some point just didn't work anymore, and they uploaded a second one. And also, when I was writing my physics exam, my phone went off before I actually started the exam, but I already started the whole steps to, to set up the online proctoring. So I did not start to take the test because in theory, there are allowed to be no sounds in the room. I stopped the test, emailed them and was like, yo, I did not start the test. My phone went off, etc., etc., And they just gave me access to the test again and I did it again and it all worked out. So just relax, keep calm. And if you do have any questions, if anything seems off, just write them an email. They respond relatively quickly. And I mean, that's what they're there for. Also, especially for the math tests, or I mean, you're going to be using math in all of the three tests, make sure that your calculations are definitely correct. And that might mean to not skip steps. So make sure you properly answer the questions that you can answer because here every single point really, really counts. Okay, and then some more specific tips. I did not really recall a lot from the tests, but I asked around. Um, and these are some tips that I heard. So for the math test, it was quite heavy on calculus. So differentiation and integration. So make sure you're confident with that. And I think in the syllabus, it also says exactly which techniques you need to be able to apply. Then for physics, make sure you can instantly recall all of the concepts that you need to recall. And also that you can compute things relatively fast with your calculator. So practice with the calculator you're going to use. Also for the calculator, make sure you're actually using the one you're allowed to. There's a whole list of calculators you're allowed to use. And if it's not on there, just email them and then they'll tell you. And then make sure you know how to use scientific notation. I think that's how it's called. So if you have a number times 10 to the minus something, some people didn't know how to use it. They didn't use it in high school. So if you don't know how to use it, make sure you know how to use it. Because if you input a really small, really high number, they want it in scientific notation. For example, if you want to write 10 to the minus 21, you write E minus 21, and then that will get recognized as 10 to the minus 21. And also these tests are designed for high schoolers, right? So if there's a topic in the syllabus that is also in the syllabus of your high school curriculum, make sure to use the practice tests or practice questions that your high school provides. And also ask your teacher to maybe have a look at the syllabus and see if they have any other resources that they can give you so you can practice. And then lastly, for the first year material, that changes every year. For our year, they gave us access to one of the textbooks and a specific chapter and some practice questions as well. Make sure you study everything in those books and textbooks and make sure you know how to use the equations that you are confronted with um, and everything that's math related. Because I think I recall is very much uh, more about computing than about the concept itself. So make sure you know how to use the equations. I mean, there will be a formula sheet provided. Make sure that you know the equations that are not on the formula sheet. And then of course, also make sure you're familiar with the concepts. Um, but I would rather focus on the computational parts of the first year material that they will give you. And then the resources uh, that you can use throughout the selection procedure is me. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Hopefully I can answer them. Just DM me on Instagram. Then use the subreddits of TU Delft. I think there's one specific subreddit for the AE selection procedure and also for CSE. And then just email them. It's gonna be an email provided. You can find it online. Email them and they do respond quite quickly. And they've always helped me out if I had any questions. And then just tips for later. If you did get in, then your ranking number does not matter at all. No one cares. I mean, occasionally the question is thrown around, oh, what ranking did you get? But in the end, no one cares. And it does not define you at all. These are all the tips that I have. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to DM me or check out the subreddit. And if you are an incoming first year at any university, if you want to know how much I spent in my first year at university, then click on this video. And hopefully this has helped you out. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.